let's get started. Now, usually when we go to Ladakh, Leh Ladakh, we go use for basically the landscape photographies. These are the one of the genres of the photographer photography. So the genres can be wildlife, can be landscape, can be macro photography. When I say macro, it is to do with the, you know, frogs, a very close of photography of a small, minute, living thing on the earth. So those are called as macro photography. Then you have night photography. There are so many genres of photography. So these are this is the one landscape which I had not tried. So I thought I should try. But what happened is we had reached Leh somewhere by the afternoon, and uh, we were strictly told that you're gonna get you're gonna just rest because you need to get acclimatized. So when we were acclimatizing the whole night, the whole evening, we were resting. And the next day, we were allowed to just go around the lay by walk. So when we were walking, we immediately got a phone call that we have seen, a, you know, a snow leopard is sighted. So please do come. And we all got so excited. Snow leopard in lay at that uh, altitude is usually not seen. It is much higher altitude like Spiti Valley. So then we all took our 600 mm ca camera. And then I took my tripod and we drove the driver said it is just two hours drive then it became three hours then it became four hours at last five five hours drive so we left exactly by 12 50 and the person who called me had to drive about 14 kilometers so he left his driver there to keep a watch on the uh, snow leopard and he came to an area where there was a network and then he had called so by the time we reached there it was five and the snow leopard was just sitting next to the uh, river there so this is a few glimpses of uh, that particular uh, thing that was the indus river that is going on and we were cam carrying our 600 mm and uh, going and it was also walking along as we were uh, you know so it was just across the river i'll show you the outcome of these uh, pictures that is my other colleague there who is from uh, mumbai so this was the very uh, interesting for me. So as I told you, once again, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sujit, for giving me uh, this opportunity. And I thank the entire uh, crew for doing such a noble uh, academic work. Thank you so much once again. Now, I'll show you some pictures and what is the motto and how I got, uh, you know, both photography and Anastasia going hand in hand for me, at least. Whenever I get stressed, I, I depend upon photography and how it has worked and how I have taken photographic trips into my Anastasia practice is something that I need to share. This was one of the pictures from Africa where if you see there is a lion there and he's trying to chase the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven giraffes. So what I learned from this is no matter how big the case is, no matter how major the case is, you need to face that. So this is what, this is the mighty lioness rather uh, trying to chase all the seven giraffes and they ran to glory. But this one of my picture that won a special mention at DJMPC award was, this is a vulture and this is a steppy eagle and these are striped mongoose. So this mongoose thought this eagle is going to, you know, hunt that and he was trying to dug dug into the hole there so this is one of the pictures from the africa itself now this is something that we need to learn from uh, this animal particularly cheetah cheetah are only seen in uh, africa we try to get some cheetah to india out of seven i think some three or four time a few have littered cubs that's a good news but then the one thing with cheetah is they're so fast, they're so fast. By the time you try and uh, focus them and shoot, they would have already hunt. They would have hunted fawn or a gazelle or whatever. So they're so quick and it's very difficult. So this taught me how to, how to you know, uh, have a fast thinking or a speed thinking during the ability of stressful times. So you need to have this ability of uh, thinking fast when there is a cardiac arrest and things like that that is how i learned the way it decides and then it takes off is something amazing so now these are the two jackals jackals so uh, this is a small fawn the mother is somewhere there and there was only one jackal trying to hunt down this fawn and the other one joined and this this was trying to uh, chase away the mother uh, you know to separate the fawn from the mother and easily kill them and that was such a disheartening to see this now this is hyena these are the i know i mean you know of course they are animals and uh, they are the most 
dirtiest <laughs> and the most foul smelling animals are the hyenas and this is carrying the little pup so what i learned from in, from them is how to handle the small ones like the pediatric cases now this picture had submitted for the you know fiab that is how we have world cups we have world cup in photography also and uh, this one was again silver prize medal for the whole entire team which i was a part of that so uh, these hyenas i'm not sure i'm how many are aware of this they kill the animal by biting them they don't kill the animal at the neck they bite their legs they bite their limbs and they crush their bones and then they you know they they, they start puncturing the stomach and they eat off half while the still the animal is alive so that's a very brutal death they planned for this was in ambosli where you know the sky was so beautiful the little calf and the bull are there elephant in africa both male and female in india the females don't have tusk but in africa both male have tusk and the female do also have tusk so this was during the sunset in uh, africa this is the african fish eagle we're trying to uh, hunt down a small fish there and uh, this is at the lake naivasha that is in africa so we had to go for a boat ride and uh, such a beautiful uh, eagle one should uh, see this too so with this you know the way it plans the way it calculates the wind that and from where it should land is something amazing and this is what uh, you know uh, to get so what i learned from this particular thing is it sees the fish from a quite a far distance so aim to get your spinals and intubations in one shot instead of having multiple uh, bricks this is another this is the mother with the two cups believe me this mother hadn't had fed the two cups for a week because we were following this cheetah every day and it was so desperate to feed the cubs and feed uh, herself that she hung down a gazelle and we were so happy to see the whole action and we 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 were uh, photographed this so what i learned from this is the way she's vigilance because cheetah have the you know the quality of going on a little higher surface where she can keep a watch on the whole savanna of africa now this is another picture where the lioness uh, was hunting a warthog uh, that is wild boar and uh, the way she hunted and chased down was something amazing and this is the male lion from africa the the, the picture makes it beautiful because of these small twigs that are there that is what so it is not just about taking pictures it is also about you know to see the how the how the habitat is what is at the back and what is at the front will the picture look good and things like that the same way what how we plan it on this year this is the female uh, lioness from uh, africa now this is called as flement response so what male ha what male does is the the lioness or the female lion comes and uh, urinates during the mating season the female creates a scent okay the male smells that and it creates a response called as flement response where it tells that it also wants to mate with the lioness that is how the mating starts this is the same thing with the leopards again this is the flement response this is a female rather so even the male creates a sense and they can each other sense their the mating time and they do uh, they do have this kind of a response called as flamen response now seeing a leopard in africa is like seeing a tiger in india that is how they value uh, leopards so this was one male and the female is sitting there and i think this is a video let me play that video and uh, this is during the mating period they mate every yeah. few, every 10 minutes or so of the day That's my camera going on. Leopard mating. See the size of the male and the female leopard. Imagine what a tiger would be at the same time. is something so amazing so this was one uh, one of my good videos which i got and one of the shots from that particular frame where the female tail is around the male now these are the few hunting shots from africa where this cheetah now cheetah first 
what it does is it tries to aim one animal because there are hundreds of animals and thousands of animals so it tries to aim the one animal and it just chases it down so but this was a this was a failed hunt and it could not hunt this time though it was so close because they were two ferocious these are topies that you see here these, these are called as topies and there is a warthog there now what happens during the mating period the lion is very ferocious in fact the lioness also is very ferocious they don't hunt they don't eat they only concentrate on mating and every 15 minutes believe me or not they keep mating so they mate about 80 to 120 times in a day that is what has been told and what happens this lioness you know wherever the lioness goes the male follows so this is the mating time so what happens is after the mating in fact uh, i was trying to read after this why was she she was shouting at the male and can you see the male expression he feels so guilty about that so she was shouting because the male when after the mating what happens the uh, the male penises have spikes so when you when the male withdraws i believe there are it hurts the female a lot so that is the time she gets pissed off in fact the female was this fem the female lioness are so powerful uh, you know she just took a you know limb and just banged on the lion and the lion just could not do anything much about that <laughs> so no wonder this is our day-to-day -day scenarios at our home also on a lighter note so this is another picture this was my first trip from Ambosli where the male elephants this is called as you know there is a small must the small liquid that flows in front of the ear that is again during the mating season season so the male elephant tries to show the power by when the, the musk comes in and you better be careful before you go in front of that animal because he'll be so ferocious and just crush you so these two are trying to fight to show their power for the conquering them this is this is the first time in africa where the five chi male cheetahs got together they used to hunt together sleep together everything was done together so they were not only out of these five only the two were brothers the rest were from some other family but they all died now this was sometime back in 2020 22 23 i guess i'm sorry 2020 or 18 i guess so now they are no more i think only one was left i don't know what happened to that this is one image called serval cat this image believe me none of them have got it in the thing so i'm going to run through this this is the malaika cheetah where the cheetah came and sat on our vehicle we all one two and three were the anesthesiologist sir was a former uh, pharmaceutical uh, manager so this love as i told you it comes on the higher place on the like a mound or a car so we were, this was our first trip and we were praying that this would come on us and uh, our car and it came malaika but recently i believe some three years back uh, while it was crossing a river it got washed away so these are the few photographs from india this red ever dugard these are wild asses from uh, gujarat this is one picture where the parakeets were fighting and uh, this got a uh, quite a bit of recognition dr sujit was mentioning about the live photography and awarded ninth best photographer in india this was the picture which i got it was a winter season this is a barasinga so i got the best for that now we were shooting uh, pelicans at uh, rangandi to in uh, near my soul so suddenly the, you see this crocodile comes and tries to catch hold of a pelican luckily it missed and this reached uh, nature in focus final land geo in final round and jungle frames which this was a winner now this was the image that uh, you know created a lot of uh, they thought this image was fake and they, I got about 5,000, roughly about 5,000 messages, to be precise, 490 plus messages uh, saying that don't post such fake images. But actually, this is a true image where the squirrel comes. Uh, in fact, this woodpecker is a, a baby woodpecker, okay? And it thought that the squirrel will come and do nothing. But in fact, the squirrel come and bit the woodpecker and it flew away. What I learned from these two, these are the most, most, uh, what I must say, watchful and alert animals so i learned how to be alert in the operating theater from them this is another from uh, puna chameleon and uh, they are beautiful lovely creature creatures that uh, god has created so this is another other shot this is another picture that created a lot of controversy saying that how again they felt that i have photoshopped this animal a bird and put it on the perch here and i have put another bird here and it 
looks like some different species treating the different one. So it is not like that. It's a very, very uh, real picture. It was shot in Bangalore, one of the outskirts of Bangalore. And this won many competition, many awards. It got recognized all over. These are blue tail beaters, which got published in one of my, one of the uh, photography uh, books. Guinea fowl from Africa. And this is from Shimoga in Bangalore, in Karnataka. Uh, this is white bellied uh, fish eagle. This is near Bangalore. This is how the relationship goes between an anesthetist and the surgeon. Obviously, you can guess who's the anesthetist here and who's the surgeon there. So here I had left a caption that when animals can plant trees, why not us? Because we are now, I don't know where we'll stop this. But this is the reason why global warming has started. We are cutting down the jungles. We are creating the road. God knows what. I really, uh, you know, I, I dread this because jungles are the saviors for us. We all know that. And the more jungles, the more better for us. This is called a starite frog. And uh, this is from the OD. This is again from our Bangalore, the uh, outskirts of Bangalore the bull, bull, bull trying to play with the cherry there. So these are the few pictures from the Africa, I mean Costa, Costa Rica, that is Central America. These are called as red-eyed tree frog and they literally are so small, a size of a male and uh, they look like a toy. These are my best pictures, the silhouette pictures. Here if you see all the deers except one I think are all looking on the same direction except one. So the reason is because the lioness was walking there. This was during the sunset where these are the deers and the lioness is just walking. As I told you, wild asses and given a caption as wild asses on the fire, this image got a lot of recognition because because these again are threatened uh, creatures. Ostrich at the sunset. This is the wildebeest. This is the real sky. This is the sky that you see in Africa and so real. These are the few silhouettes which I'll run through because of the time constraints. This can you see the you know, the pattern of the sky that is there? Like unfortunately, I did not have any animal there, but this picture would have been awesome with an animal with a tree there. These the skies are beautiful in Africa. So one should see this. This is the black and red and this the color this is the again deer at the sunrise this is at the sunrise and uh, there are few so that was the outcome of the picture so this is the snow leopard and this is what we were shooting and believe me none of them believe that i have shot this snow leopard again because snow leopard is seen at a very high altitude uh, for this particular shot on the right here i was lying down on the ground and uh, shooting the snow leopard this is Leh and ladakh the beauty of Leh and ladakh this is the pangong lake and that is where the china starts this is one of the night photography uh, this is the milky way so so this needs a lot of uh, patience to create this and a lot of planning to be done for that. Again, the beautiful, uh, you know, Pangong Lake that gets created in the early mornings of the, during early mornings. And uh, this is again the Pangong Lake with the clouds, small showers there, here and there, and uh, what a beautiful place. So when I keep a photo, uh, when I keep the camera at the lower down and shoot, this is the image that I create. So learned so many things. Again, this is a Nubra Valley, shot at Nubra Valley. There was a small lake there and we were, we were seeing the reflection and we thought we should take the reflection. This is the Sangam where all the, the, see, the meeting of the two rivers. Can you see the demarcation here? It's a beautiful demarcation. Again, the Milky Way. So now what happens is, you know, the earth is moving, right? It's moving. So you keep the camera on, keep on the autofocus and keep shooting. And when you club all that, this is how it looks like. These are called a star trail photography. This is the star trail. These are all the stars that you see when the earth moves and they all, when you stick on all the pictures, that is exactly the outcome of that. So uh, I did shoot some uh, historical uh, pictures at Humbi. Uh, these are the few pictures. Again, this is a star trail picture. This was shot at night, two o'clock. This was also shot at about 2.30 in the night to get this particular image because there should not be any more light there and what uh, what uh, amazes me is this particular boy with hemifacial microsomia you know i'll just play this video you, can you see is there was no mandible or uh, there was no mandible the absence of mandible on this side so we had posted him he had a arch palate it was to, but he was an avid he got to know that he also likes loves wildlife for the so we know now should i take the tube out so before I play the other video, we had to use a fiber optic intubation to intubate him. Tell me now, should I take the tube out? Support. We had yeah, to where is it hurting? All right. Will you, be, will you be able to breathe correctly? Very good point. So, we did a mandibular distraction and he got to know that I was a wildlife photographer and he wrote, he drew a tiger 
and he wrote excellent uh, you know excellent letter for me and he said the moral is if you work hard you can achieve anything and everything so wildlife photography has you know the lord like the evening in this picture was very good very okay. intelligent boy very excellent his peers used to tease him so he wanted to undergo surgery. Okay. Okay. Yeah, don't do that, don't touch that. So probably this I'll end my lecture. I hope I have done some kind of justice. Thank you, Dr. Sujit. If there are any questions, I am free to take. Thank you so much for your patient hearing.